Hi, it is I, John underscore Silva underscore. Today we have Miss Madu, Madu, Madu asking, how do environment artists create this hazy depth of field? I assume some technique combining layers, types, and airbrush, but I have been struggling to replicate it. Anytime I try, it comes out too soft. Okay. I'm kind of curious to see how too soft would look like in your image, but uh, we can replicate this beautiful Guild Wars 2 uh, painting. I'll take a... Let me take an area of this whole painting that would be... I'd say maybe here would be good. We copy-paste. Could make it larger. I guess this is good enough. We'll just focus on one area because it's the same. It's the same everywhere else. Or ac mm, actually, I found a better better place here. There's quite a bit, quite a bigger contrast in this area. There you go. All right. Let's get on with it then. Um, so how to create... Okay, so the first thing you want to do is make sure that having layers... Just... It's not even layer types. Just having layers is the number one thing to do. I'm going to color pick here. Um, make sure that I... I I'm actually going to move this a bit to the right. So I have a bit more space. There you go. So um, I'm going to roughly do the shape here. Oh, wait, I do need to add the background. In this case, I can just do gray. There you go. And the background seems to be a very bright color. All right, there you go. So first, you want to think of what is the, the, the core value of the shape that you're painting or the main value, whatever you want to call it. So I'm just going to do this tree, weird tree looking shape here, All right? This should be a pretty short answer, specifically to what you're asking. So I'm just kind of like, so you have one shape here, right? Blah, blah, blue. You're done. And then you have another one. I'll make a make a new layer. And you have this like dragon. Actually, I don't know if it's a dragon. This is this this, <laughs> this thing floating around. <laughs> right? So you have one going uh over. It's all about layering first. Uh the thing about atmospheric perspective um which is what it is mostly atmospheric perspective. It's all about the local value plus contrast within that uh, within that uh, shape or 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 yeah within the within the shape. I'll explain better as as we go. So we have a layer here, and I'm gonna make another layer behind. Again, I'm not changing the value of it at all. Just kind of like adding things as I go. I'm sure the the image did not start it this way. By the way. Uh, I'm sure it was a build-up to this. Um, but I'm just going to be focusing on showing you how to create that effect. Uh, that's what I'm... That's what I want to show you first. Um, also, proportion of the size... I know this has nothing to do with the values, but proportion of the size is actually quite important for depth of field or or um, atmospheric uh, perspective, any of those things, it's, it's really, it's more important than people may think. Um, because if the tree that is close to us, the same one is further away from us, the size of it in relation to the one closer to us is gonna matter and the value range and contrast of it is gonna matter too. 
Uh, so you have these weird thingies, and I'm gonna make another layer under this. There's a lot of layering going on. That is the main selling point of this whole thing, is that the um, the artists by overlapping a lot added quite a lot of um, contrast in shapes and values, right? So you have this like weird weird thingy here. Oh, you'll notice that my value is darker than what's in there, but that's that's fine. Um, then he has this like weird mushrooms thing here. Um, I'll add those there. Uh, I, I know I didn't add the ones from the tree, but I'm I'm ignoring that on purpose. Uh, so let's just do let's just do that. Um, do -do 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 -do. And in fact, there's more even to the back here. So this is where like parts of the background you start to to see that are a lot softer. And again, I am color peeking directly, so it's a bit cheating. But um, what you still want to keep in mind at all at all times is the local value of the thing you're painting. So I'm not quite sure what what is this shape. Maybe it's like another coral looking cor coral reef looking thing. But I'm just gonna add a bunch of it like here in the background, like that, and we'll call it we'll call it a you know a day for now. Um, Oh, another thing I can do is, let's go back to this one. I forgot these little balls here actually do matter because they're lighter in value and some of them even disappear. I, th I think I think this is just a layer that he uses. I'm just going to make it separately so that we can then manipulate that. All right, so let's let's pretend your image is done, right? And the way you create the the... Um, the separation, the atmospheric perspective, the, the, the depth of field is by first, you establish your light and shadow per shape. So I'm going to select this coral reef looking thing, right? And I'm going to add, um, you know, what? I'll just color pick from, from him. So you just add light and shadow or um, if there's very little light in shadow, you want to focus on the texture. So it looks like he's like a photo texture and then he went with a, with a, with a smudge brush and kind of like just moved it around. Uh, I don't, do I have anything like that? I, I think I do. Not that it matters to answer this question because it's, it's not a texture question. It's a, how to make, how to make it, uh, uh, yeah, I can kind of use this one. It's whatever. All right, let's just do that. You establish the the col local colors and local local uh, values in relation to the scene, obviously. Um, and once you have that, so let's say I have this and let's pretend it's done. What you wanna do is, um, one thing you can do to push it back. Actually, there's two things. My favorite way to, to do it is by making a screen layer. So I'm making a new uh, new screen layer that is attached to, or I have a selection only on this, right? And on that screen layer, I go with a soft brush and sort of like give it a haze from, uh, I can like color pick from the background and give it like a touch. Oh, that's too, too harsh. Let's also make it a little bit more purple. There you go. Yeah? Uh, no, later. Okay. <laughs> the food got here. So I'm giving it a little bit of a haze. I'm being very careful with this. It is actually uh, quite strong. I'm going to lower the opacity. So you see that once you, it's way easier to deal with this situation. Once you have your values and everything else established initially, once again, screen layer, um, or no, actually both normal layer and screen layer work the same. I'll make a new layer here. Um, so there you go. They're like, they can work very similar, except with the screen layer, you want to be careful with your colors because if you add a lot of color, it could actually be linear dodge as well. Screen or linear dodge layer. Uh, I swapped, I swapped it to linear dodge now. Let's see if we can. 
Yeah, they, they all can work very, very well. Um, I still prefer sc screen for this, to be honest. Uh, so I'm just going to go back. Um, so there's that. And you want to be very, very subtle with it. Very subtle. Uh, but once again, it's imperative that I that that I make a focus on the fact that the reason why it works so well, there's one big mistake that I think most people do, which is this. That, like you just add the adding a fog in front of things. I actually see some of it here at the bottom, and I don't agree with it <laughs> uh, in the reference. I think it it cheapens everything. You don't want to go ahead and like just add a goddamn fog. You want to be sensible and you want to be... You want the local values to carry through you. And to summarize atmospheric perspective, atmospheric, perspe atmospheric perspective isn't just a goddamn like um, atmosphere going in front of you. I mean, it is a lot of that. However, due to the fact that a shape is so far away from us, we start seeing less detail. We, the contrast, um, uh, the contrast is a lot smaller, uh, meaning that the range of going really dark and really bright is diminished, and uh, and things like texture and stuff like that, it becomes pretty much naked to the eye, uh, right? So. That's what's going to make your image mainly have that effect. Now, I can do the same for the for the rest. Uh, honestly, I could just stop the video or I could stop the, the, the explanation here. But I'll, I'll just, um, I'll do the rest for, you know, because it looks cool. And I kind of want to do it. But um, yeah, what will carry you the most is uh, local value, contrast, and whether you see a lot of texture or not. That is the main, the main uh, thing. So uh, wait, did I select this? Yes. All right. So I'm just kind of going around and just replicating what. Once again, the way I would do this, uh, it's pretty much what I'm doing right now. I would not change much, which is uh, I'm painting the thing, whether it's close to me or farther away from me. I'm I'm keeping in mind the contrast of it and the colors and the texture. And if I really wanted to push, you know what? Let's do that. If I really wanted to push this shape on the back here, further away, I'm gonna give you the. Where's the pretty bright light? Uh, no, this is not a good brush. Where is it? Oh, my opacity is halved. I I forgot about that. I could change that. There you go. Uh, I think you use the uh, either color dodge, both both ways work. Either color dodge or or um. Oh, this is just the texture. Where's the? All right. Color dodge. He either use the color dodge or whatever. Honestly, you can. The way he rendered the image, yeah, pretty much a color dodge. There you go. Um, whatever. Let's. This is good enough. Obviously, um, you you want to do it on the layer underneath, which I'm not doing, but just for the sake of speeding things up. There you go. So let's pretend this is it. And if I wanted to push it further back, now that I have my main values of it, right? Uh, I'll do exactly the same, where I'll select the shape again, uh, new layer set to screen, and take the same color that we uh, taken before. Uh, actually, no, I'm, I'm, I'm actually gonna fix this shape here. Boom, all right. Uh, all right, so now we don't have that weird glitch going on there. There you go, perfect. Um, and now I'm just gonna give it like, if I really wanted to push it back with screen, it evens out. So it, it makes the contrast smaller, right? And I can keep pushing it back and back and back and back and back as much as you want, right? Just avoid doing the whole like this, the whole like adding, <laughs> adding, um, I feel like, I feel like Kekai could, uh, Kekai, uh, 
started doing this way earlier on and everyone caught on doing it. Uh, I really don't know why everyone just started doing that a shit ton. But you want to be very careful with just adding a fog behind every single uh, shape. It works. It can work. Right? But it, it can also cheapen your image, in my opinion. So I can keep pushing this back as much as I want. And the same goes for all these other shapes. Right? Uh, screen layer. So this one here, I can just keep on. Oh, I forgot. This... There you go. Um, let me reselect. Reselect this. Whoops, I made a mistake. Delete. Wait, what am I doing wrong? Oh no, select this, select this other layer and delete. I have my layers messed up. That's why it, it glitched out like that. But um, there you go. Okay, so now it's fixed. I'm gonna hide selection. And with the same is with this one. So you wanna overall push it back if you have any um, lighting to it if I disable the screen layer and I go to I go to this shape and I add the light and shadow like in the painting this is just to drive a point across uh, I can use a triangular brush and yeah, that's that's fine so if I want to make this like brighter and have all these like really nice uh, glow to it and like they have like sort of like the textures going through etc so once you have that set up like the textures mainly and the the main light source and shadow once you have that then you can push it back as much as as much as you want as long as as, as long as you do it uniformly so I'm gonna bring back the screen layer so there you go I can just push it back and you can add more blue less blue at that point, it's really up to you. Just make it, make sure that it's uh, like I can add a lot more blue here. There you go. And we we're starting to get the same effect. Just be very, 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 very subtle with it. Obviously, the background that I have, I could make it darker. Well, remove the remove the selection here. I can make it a lot darker, etc., to bring like the contrast back in. But it's the same thing over and over and over again for every single shape that we have here. Um, and that's honestly the best, the easiest way to do the whole. Um, definitely, this is a pet peeve of mine. The, like atmospheric perspective. Oh, there's one last thing you could do. I almost forgot, which is at the end, you could give like very very subtle glows I'm gonna lower down my, my opacity you could add at the edge very subtle glows this is fine it doesn't cheapen the image very much um, as long as you have everything already pre-established it's fine like plenty of people do that I do this towards like the end or or you know whenever I'm getting closer to established image so you can go around and add just very very soft glows here and there that's fine uh, but only I would make it a rule of only after uh, everything else is is established, and we've gone through the steps, All right? So um, it's a pretty quick, pretty quick one. Uh, I did try to make it a little little longer and explain the fundamentals of. Uh, there's more to it, obviously. Yeah, I could make a, go a whole one hour video on just um depth of field or, or, or atmospheric perspective. It's not just haze. That is the main thing. It's not just haze. So this concludes another question answered. Clap it up. <laughs> Clap it up, boys. Uh, and I'll see you on the next Silver Decodes. Goodbye.